This little shear beam load cell is set up with a lot of the same features that we use with the cantilever beam load cell in the lab, except it's a lot smaller and a lot stiffer. And because it's a shear beam configuration, it's sensitive to the applied force rather than to the bending moment. We've got these wires coming out of it. There's a Wheatstone bridge of four strain gauges in here under this white stuff. And that Wheatstone bridge, the red and black wires provide the excitation voltage, and the white and green wires come back and provide the inputs that we're going to put into the amplifier. So they're coming over here, and there's the red and black attached to the plus five source from the Arduino, and here's the white and green going into pins six and seven of the amplifier. Now today I've hooked it up with uh, three 100 ohm resistors across it so that the gain resistance is 33 ohms. 33.3 I guess if we divide 100 by 3. And that's going to give me a pretty high gain, something over, uh, over 2000. And I'm going to need that because the sensitivity of this particular load cell is not very high. It's only going to change one millivolt per volt for the full load uh, uh, capacity of this load cell, which is 20 kilograms. So if I want to get a signal of any size, I'm going to need a fairly high uh, uh, gain on my amplifier. Now what I'm going to do is I can press on this and apply forces here, but if I want to weigh something, I'll need a little cup to weigh it in. So I've got this little can here with some washers on it. I'm just going to thread that into the hole here so that I can apply some loads. So threading that in so that it's going to be nice and stiff with the loading platform as well because we don't want that loading platform jumping around all over the place. So I'll just tighten that bolt down a little bit with some pliers. There we go. And now, if I take this setup, I know the sensitivity here, I know the gain that I've applied, I should be able to figure out the applied mass just by calculating through all the numbers without doing any calibration. It won't be as accurate if I do it that way, but it'll at least get me started. Now let's have a look at what happens. If I take the water bottle, and drop it in, it bounces, but it doesn't bounce up and down nearly as, as long and, and nearly as far as it did with that cantilever beam load cell that was really quite springy. So let's watch that again. Drop it in, and it's actually the bottle that's bouncing, not so much the load cell that's going up and down, but the bottle itself is flexible. So let's see what comes out when we, uh, when we have a look at that. So here's the Arduino code that I'm using to collect the data. I'm setting this A0 value equal to 0, and in here, after I set up the serial port, I'm taking a whole lot of readings of uh, uh, analog read from uh, port A0 and averaging them. So this gives me an indication of what the scale's reading when there's no weight on it. Then in my loop here, I'm keeping track of when to print, I'm keeping track of a smoothed value for the mass, and I'm getting a value from analog read. I can calculate the gain from the resistances that I know, and I can calculate the voltage that is coming in on the, uh, on the Arduino uh, from the difference between what I read and the zero level voltage divided by 1024 times the reference voltage. I can convert that to millivolts that was coming out of the bridge by multiplying by a thousand millivolts per volt and dividing by the gain that I know from the amplifier. The sensitivity of the load cell is one millivolt for every 20 kilograms for every volt of excitation. It's got a tolerance of plus or minus 0.15. So that should be within 15% even without doing any calibration. And finally, I can then calculate a mass as equal to the number of millivolts that I've got divided by 5. So that's my uh, millivolts per volt uh, uh, level times the 20 kilogram full scale. And so that should give me a mass in kilograms. And then I can use some exponential smoothing to get a smoothed out value of that. 
And finally, down here, if it's time, I could print some stuff. So let's run that. And it starts measuring. And I'm getting a value close to zero in terms of the number of grams. If I drop the bottle in, I get a number that settles in at around 500, which is what I expect for a 500 milliliter bottle. Finally, if I push the button, it goes really fast, and I can get some high-speed data and copy that over to Excel. So going over to Excel, where I've already pasted in some data, I can draw a graph of my uh, mass and my smooth mass as a function of time. Here I can see when I'm zoomed in that around about this point in time I dropped the bottle. It hit pretty hard at about it, uh, a force effectively equivalent to about 8,000 grams rather than the 500 grams we were expecting. And it bounced and we went back down to zero here. Then it hit the uh, scale again the second time, about a tenth of a second later, and it bounced again. And finally it settled in, and within a fairly short time we were reading a pretty accurate value for the mass of that bottle. So this is really encouraging for our ability to take a load cell, an inexpensive load cell, right off the shelf and without even calibrating it, get a pretty good measurement of forces or masses that is going to respond pretty quickly. I think what we're seeing here is actually the flexibility of that bottle bouncing up and down rather than the flexibility of the load cell. So that's useful stuff to take back to understanding what was going on with your cantilever beam load cell that had large oscillations that carried on for quite a long time. Think about what's physically happening and you should be able to explain the data that's coming out as a result.